Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay from DirtFarmerJay.com. Fourth of July is almost here, and many of us enjoy flying the flag out on our front porch or out in our front yard. But you know, it's hard to find a good flagpole or flag standard. Uh, like, look at this broke down one. Well, we replaced that one with this brand new, really cool flag standard. Stick with me and I'll show you how to build one for yourself using easily obtainable supplies. Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay from DirtFarmerJay.com. Thanks for joining me today, where in this brief episode, I'm gonna show you how to build one of these flag standards. But before we do that, I wanna give some credit to Annan Flag Company here. No, they're not one of our sponsors. And as far as I know, they're not even aware that we've done this video. But I'd like to give a shout out to them because they are in the USA. And I really think that if at all possible, buy the flag from the country that you're celebrating. So in this case, they have three manufacturing plants in the United States, uh, and they are a great resource. You can check them out at the website that's shown below. And one other thing that I really want to call out, they have a great FAQ and flag resource section that really uh, inform me on just flag etiquette, and why we do what we do, and what's in the law, what's not, and all that sort of thing. I think you'll enjoy reading it as much as I did. Second thing I want to call out is just uh, the the standard sizes of flags for these porch types of flags uh, for this American flag. Generally speaking, they're about three foot wide and five foot long. There's some variance in them a little bit. If they're just a printed flag, they're probably gonna be right three foot by five foot. If they are a sewn flag like this one, they're because of the overlapping hems and all that sort of thing, you're gonna have some different sizing, perhaps just a little bit under those sizes, but it's very, very close. That brings up, what about the flag standard length itself? Well, we were able to use three quarter inch EMT conduit, cut it in half and end up with two five footers, and that works really well. You can use six footers if you want. However, the longer the standard, the more leverage it exerts on the bracket. So make sure you have a bracket, this bracket, that is on our uh, front porch columns wouldn't be strong enough for something that's longer than six foot because it's not just the weight and the leverage that's being exerted on the bracket way back down here, but think about the wind pressure also and the movement and that sort of thing. And you may have to buy uh, a cast iron or aluminum type of bracket. And that's certainly available from Annan as well as uh, Gettysburg flag and so forth. So check those out. So that is uh, some of the specifications you need to know. All right, as we jump in, if you find this video to be helpful as we give you a few answers, won't you just uh, go ahead and click on the subscribe button or like the video. And if you do subscribe, click on the bell so that you get informed about upcoming videos published approximately every week. And check out our new merch that is on our website shown below here in this merch. We got t-shirts, the great back, uh, ball cap, uh, our new coffee mug, carpenter pencils, just some new things. And if you find that to be appealing, uh, support us. That'll be posted pretty soon. Well, let's get to work here. All right, to put together one of these great flag standards, here's what you need. A length of three quarter inch uh, EMT conduit. Uh, if you can find aluminum, that's fine. It's lighter. We had to use galvanized steel. That was our resource. And we did that as well. The next thing you need is some way to deburr the end of it. I used a regular deburr. If you don't have a deburr, a deburr, a deburrer, then you can use this type of file, rod file, also commonly known as a rat tail. Sorry for you rat lovers, uh, but you need to clean out that. The next thing you need is some flag mounting rings. The Where you can purchase those is in the description below. Then you need spray paint for the pole. We decided to do this medium brown, we really like the color of that. You need a finial of some kind that's gonna top it or also known as a flag topper. Um, the flag you'll be flying itself. And then you'll also need uh, some supplies to clean the pole uh, before you paint it. So that's either acetone or denuture to alcohol. And then I also used a clear coat polyurethane to spray the flag topper after I painted it uh, the brass color that we showed there, you there earlier. So those are the supplies you need to get rolling, okay? 
So the first thing you need to do is deburr the conduit. These are little sharp sh uh, shards that stick out or filings, and they can really cut up your fingers or make it hard to insert the, the flag topper and so forth. So go ahead and deburr them using either this deburr or the rat tail file. And then once you get that done, then you're gonna go ahead and drill a couple of small holes at the end where the flag topper is going to be if you're using one that has a tenon, which we did, we repurposed the old one we have. So you need to fix that flag topper or a place to do that. Then you're going to go ahead and lightly sand the whole piece of conduit using a medium piece of sandpaper uh, and just work along the length to get a nice scratch pattern, clean the whole thing up. You're doing it for a couple things. One, to kind of even it out, but secondly, to give the paint something to grip on when you paint it. So then wipe down the whole conduit with um, uh, a rag that's moistened with either acetone or the, the alcohol, and uh, now you are ready to paint. Notice that um, what we did is used a little jig and I use some barn spikes and some little stanchions that I use on my bench top to elevate work. Uh, modified those so the nails would go through and I could suspend the conduit through there. Then I went ahead and began painting them. Notice that I don't stop unless uh, the paint is off. You never want to stop when you're painting because your puddle, well, you won't, but the paint will. And so you want to go ahead and get that done. And I painted everything up and down and, and uh, got a real nice even coat. And then you can see here to rotate areas into accessibility where I could paint them that hadn't been painted yet. I just used the heads of the barn spike, rotated around. And once we got those all painted, it was a warm summer day. We just let it dry out there and get good and dry before we handled them. All right, now you're ready to go the next step. All right, so the next step is the flag topper or the finial. In this case, we chose to use what we already have. And as you can see here, it's wood varnished, um, and so it needs some work. But I also want to show you the old flag mounting ring. As you can see, these are inexpensive, also known as cheap, and uh, weren't going to hold up probably another season. So look contrast between the old plastic ones and these new beautiful milled aluminum ones uh, that are about $15 a pair. You can look in the description below and find where to purchase those. But these mounting rings slip beautifully over three-quarter conduit. They have rotating rings. They're very well made with their own carabiner. And while I wasn't able to find any that were made here in the United States, those particular ones are vastly superior to the plastic ones. So um, enough about that. Let's go back to the finial. What we did then is cut about two inches of the rod to stay with the finial and then went ahead and shaved that down to make it a tenon that would fit inside of there. Then we went to work and we sanded and buffed up the top of those finials so that the new paint would grab, sprayed them with a brass colored paint. And then after that was dried and we put on a couple of coats to get nice, even thick finish. Again, moving all the time so you don't puddle or the paint doesn't. So uh, then when you're done with that, you can coat the whole thing with an exterior polyurethane to give it some nice durability. And as you can see, it, it is a really nice finish. So it looks great. And uh, then let's go ahead and assemble this. One of the questions I see asked commonly about building flag standards, can you use PVC pipe? Well, you can, but I don't think you're gonna like the results. Here's why. When you have a flag standard like this, there's quite a bit amount of weight, and it's usually about that angle that it's mounted. So over a period of time, this is not gonna hold up. It's gonna develop memory, it's gonna flex, uh, and it just won't look good. And over um, multiple seasons, the PVC will blacken because of UV exposure to the sun. So I would recommend right from the get-go, just go ahead and use this type of conduit. It's not that expensive. These whole projects, including paint and everything, cost just probably $20 a pole. Uh, maybe 22 because of the flag mounting rings, but this is going to last many, many years versus replacing over and over again the PVC. There is one place you can use PVC, and that's on vertical flag mounts. Uh, matter of fact, we have one where we've driven a rebar stake in the ground with about two and a half foot of it sticking out. We use a piece of PVC and slip over it. There's a flag affixed to the top, but I'm going to tell you that's not our permanent solution. 
It doesn't develop memory, but it does flex and it's a little low to the ground. Um, we'll eventually put in a regular rigid full uh, fledged flag standard with a lower and raise uh, lanyard and all that. But in the meanwhile, it's a good uh, gap solution, but don't use PVC for this. Uh, you'll be disappointed with it. All right, let's go ahead and put this together and it goes together very quickly. So here's the first thing you need to do. You're gonna go ahead and slip on the top flag mounting ring and put it down about three inches from the top of where the flag topper is going to be. Go ahead and tighten that down. Go ahead and now take the flag finial or the flag topper, insert the tenon inside, or if you've got a slipover kind, and I've also given you a, um, a source in the description of where you can buy those as well. Uh, so you could, if, depending on whether you're doing a slipover or it's being inserted into the standard, uh, then go ahead and insert that, tighten that down. Then you're gonna go down to the other end, measure three foot between the clips or where the carabiners are affixed, put your next standard in, uh, or excuse me, flag mounting ring, and they are tightened down with a really nice mounting system using an Allen wrench with an Allen set screw. Go ahead and affix those. And now you can see right here, these are three foot apart. There's your set screw right there. And now you're going to go ahead and affix the flag using the uh, uh, carabiners. And now you are ready to fly the flag. Whether it's this flag or another one for a special occasion, you now have a durable piece of hardware that you made, you just did it yourself, and you can use year after year. It is a, a bit heavier than we had before. I need to take more care when I stack it and that sort of thing, but I really like how these look. You be the judge of whether or not you think this is superior to what you can buy off the shelf or what we showed you earlier. Remember, if you found this to be helpful, won't you like the video? Better yet, subscribe to our channel, and when you do, Ring the bell so that we can contact you every week and let you know about a new video that's up about Maggie's Kitchen, the yard, the kitchen, uh, product reviews, building, these types of things, things in the shop. Until the next time, this is Dirt Farmer Jay going out to display the flag. Happy Fourth of July, everyone.